I am very grateful to Gongsi for giving me the chance to speak on this occasion. Uh, I, at the very initial point, I will declare that the subject is very unsettled now. This is a very uh, peeping in our knowledge. So we are not very confident about the effect of microbiota on diabetes mellitus. The microbiome has been associated with pathophysiology of most chronic diseases, including type 2 diabetes, as seen in both preclinical animal models and in healthy individuals. Therefore, there is considerable interesting potential use of microbiota in clinical application for understanding and treating type 2 diabetes. Human gut is a complex ecosystem consisting of microbiome, host cells, and nutrients. There are about 100 trillion bacteria in the intestinal tract and they form the gut microbiota. The intestinal microflora of healthy adults principally consists of six phyla, Firmicutes, proteobacteria, bacteriotoidetes, actinobacteria, fusobacteria, and verucomicrobia. Bacteria is involved in type 2 diabetes, bacteria dates, and firmicutes occupy the dominant position in the human intestinal tract and play a pivotal role in the nutritional absorption system and support the intestinal barrier enhancement. Bacteria diabetes outnumber firmicutes. Current research continues to find association between the bacteria and diabetes, both type 1 and type 2, and these appear to involve many metabolic effects and immune response processes, and most of these associate with more specific mechanisms. Among the commonly and consistently reported findings, the genera of bifecobacterium, bacterioids, fecalibacterium, acumensia, acumensia, and rosburia were negatively associated with type 2 diabetes. While the genera of ruminococcus, fusobacteria, and blossia were positively associated with type 2 diabetes. So more acumensia means control of the blood sugar. This is about a gut mycobacteria composition. Dominant species are Clostridium, Eubacterium, Fecal Bacterium, Bacteroidetes, and Bifidobacterium. Rare species, Streptococcus, Escheria coli, Enterobacteria, transient species, yeast, lactic acid, and bacteria. Common cell bacteria interacts with pathogen recognition receptors, we call it as PRR, and leads to protection from pathogens. Small chain fatty acid from dietary fiber leads to anti inflammatory effect. Drug cell expansion leads to immune homeostasis. And lifestyle changes in terms of the diet modification by avoiding high fat, low fiber diet, <coughs> and alcohol restriction. And with drugs like metformin, there are much improvement. And these changes in tight junction leads to pathogen escape to circulation. Long chain fatty acid production leads to inflammation. Inflammatory signals leading to autoimmunity. These are all partially controlled by these lifestyle changes with this effect on bacteria. Diet is a crucial regulator of intestinal microflora. Composition of the microbial community ecosystem is dynamic and is dependent upon many factors like genes, medications, and diet. Dietary changes can induce temporary shifts in a large number of microorganisms as rapidly as as within 24 hours, gut microbiota composition also varies with an individual age. This age-related gut microbiota changes could occur due to changes in diet at different ages and changes in inflammation due to some age-related disease and changes leading to decreased immune system function. The gut microbiota plays a pivotal role in the body's metabolism and immunity response can also become a regulator of the effect of the diet on the host metabolic state. On the other hand, these factors may also provide a potential impact on the onset of metabolic disease like diabetes. The type, quality, component, and source of human food intake will affect the composition of gut microbiome as well as the functions and interaction in the microbiome ecosystem. Main energy source of the gut microbiome is dietary carbohydrate and restriction of dietary carbohydrate can limit the growth of the microbiome. Incidence of type 2 diabetes is inversely associated with the total amount of dietary fiber, and this fiber also impacts intestinal microbiome population, and fiber intake is associated with an increase in microbial diversity and the ratio of 
permicutes and bacteriotitis. Increase in dietary fiber intake also increase the abundance of the human intestinal microflora and leads to higher microflora richness associated with higher microflora stability. Fiber dietary promotes the fermentation of intestinal microbes and these appear to cause an increase in short chain fatty acids which participate in the regulation mechanism of glucose homeostasis. Soluble fiber directly lowers blood glucose and increases the viscosity of gastric juices. The more viscous fiber leads to longer gastric entry time and more gastric entry time means less slow glucose absorption. Additionally, these changes lead to small intestinal transit time, slowing and increased starch digestion, which is associated with a reduced rate of glucose absorption, leading to changes in blood glucose and cholesterol concentration. More dietary fiber reduces the risk of type 2 diabetes and is also associated with maintaining a healthy weight. Healthy weight adults and children can increase their intake of plant fruits rich in fiber while reducing total energy intake that is more often associated with high sugar, high fat and low fiber foods. A personalized diet can successfully improve postprandial blood glucose elevation. Use of more specific medicinal nutrition recommendation shows the possible prevention and management of type 2 diabetes. Additionally, the ratio of firmicutes and bacteriotides is also significantly lower in type 2 diabetic patients than in non-diabetic patients. In type 2, there is an abundance of bacteriotides and fecal bacteria. Abnormal gut microbiota is often observed in pre-diabetic patients also. Early intestinal microorganism ecology is impacted by breastfeeding and childbirth, which prevents the onset of diabetes. The full implication of this observation, although not conclusive, appeared to indicate that there is developmental impact on microbiome development and strength and outcome of these factors will lead to be more fully explored in future research. Regarding studies on animal models, in intestinal microbiota transplantation experiment, John free mice that received transplanted gut microbiota from OBOB mice showed a significant increase in obesity and associated insulin resistance. In subsequent weight loss surgery experiments, the correlation between obesity and intestinal microbiota was also demonstrated with an observed increase in fat mass in giant free mice transplanted with altered microbiome. These studies all started to substantiate the potential cause and effect of relationship. The results of gut microbiology studies in mouse models can, of course, be simply directly translated into human comparison. That means the animal results are not similar in human, and these pitfalls of direct comparison need to be avoided. The reproducibility of human experimental studies is also sometimes limited, which may also be influenced by variations in difference among study settings, geographical location of the sample preparation, as well as inconsistency in data analysis. Moreover, there are some studies which have produced contradictory observation and data in human research. It is unclear as to the root cause of this variation. However, it may be partially attributed to different dietary habits and environmental cultural factors around the world, as well as to different experimental methods used. However, future conclusion regarding human microflora connection to diabetes will require intervention studies. To date, fecal microbiota transplantation, called as FMT, antibiotic therapy, and probiotic therapy are considered effective in various intervention studies. FMT has also been considered an effective tool to gain evidence of microbiome association and the causality of many diseases. When insulin resistant men received blood microbiota from lean body mass donors, analysis of the experimental result demonstrated that FMT improved insulin sensitivity and the number of butyrate producing bacteria also increased significantly. More butyrate means less chances of diabetes. However, not all patients receiving FMT so the equal results. Out of the anti-diabetic drug, the metformin is very promising on its effect on the microbiota. They lead to upregulation of GLP-1 and PPAR receptors in healthy individuals and in type 2 diabetes. 
has multiple effects in the intestine, such as increasing GLP-1 concentration in the intestine and extraction of glucose. They reduce lipid absorption and inflammation caused by lipoprotein saccharide. Also reverse type 2 diabetes related changes because of the abundance of several gut microbiota appears more similar to non-diabetic control level when treated with metformin. So metformin changes the microbiota of a diabetic person to like a non-diabetic microbiota. Metformin disrupts the microbial characteristic associated with diabetes including changes in the composition of the intestinal microbiota. They alter the intestinal microbiota balance in treatment named type 2 diabetes, while germ-free mice had glucose tolerance after receiving metformin modified microbiota and so improved results. Metformin in mice fed a high fatty diet showed abundance of the mucin degrading bacteria, acarmense mucophilia, and which means better diabetic control. Similar conclusions have been found in other human studies. A metformin recipient show enrichment of also TDC vector and spirochete, acarmensis mensophilia, and several small chain fatty acid producing microbiota are low when compared to non diabetic patients who had a relatively high abundance. And this study reveals some of the mechanisms by which metformin can change the microbiota. Probiotics appear to have a wide range of effects on the host, including improved regulation of insulin sensitivity by improving host metabolism composition, by reducing pro-inflammatory cytokines, and by reducing intestinal permeability, directly improve host metabolism and increase small chain fatty acid production, also improve intestinal balance through the production of antibacterial compounds and competition with pathogen, also regulate the host immune response and activate specific gene activation and impact extra intestinal process. So probiotics are of many help. Multiple probiotics reduces insulin resistance by effects on guard microbiota. Injection of water can transport lactic acid bacteria to the guard, alter guard microbial composition, inhibit the production of lipoprotein saccharide and increase the close connection of gut epithelial cells. Oral administration of lactobacillus ureteri also improves insulin secretion. A mensophilia reduces insulin resistance and reduces destruction of the intestinal barrier. Low levels of mensophilia may be a biomarker for impaired glucose tolerance. So more mensophilia means better glucose control. A mensophilia derived extracellular vesicles can regulate gut permeability and a low in type 2 diabetic patient. Supplementation of them can reduce low grade inflammatory response and metabolic reduction. It is a mucus degrading bacteria and its abundance is negatively correlated with glucose tolerance and fat accumulation. The mechanism of decreasing insulin sensitivity of this mensophilia may also be related to its membrane protein called as AMAP. 1100 is a special membrane protein isolated from the bacteria. Study has shown that the special <coughs> protein binds to toll-like receptor and participate in protective mechanism for the intestinal barrier. This a municipalia play a role in reducing biomarkers associated with the inflammatory response leading to diabetes. They improve insulin sensitivity. The regulatory effect of probiotics on improving insulin sensitivity have population limitation and then may not work for everyone. It is worth noting, for example, that two recent studies have shown that probiotics have no effect on gestational diabetes. Obesity type 2 are often characterized by changes in intestinal microflora, inflammation, and disruption of intestinal barrier. The gut microbiome can interact with dietary components and habits to influence host insulin sensitivity. Industrial microbiome type 2 and healthy individuals is often markedly different. Modification of gut microbiome by diet leads to dysregulation and secretory changes of intestinal microbial metabolisms, leading to insulin resistance and diabetes. Intestinal microbiome can also affect metabolism and the potential risk of diabetes by changing the way they respond to dietary ingredients. Lipopolysaccharides induce inflammatory cytokines through immune cells and adipocytes causing low-grade inflammation, while acetic acid or butyrate can regulate the function of immune cells, that is, they antagonize the effect of LPS.
which is derived from the cell wall of the gram negative bacteria the lps of gut microbiota binds with the tl toll like receptor 4 inducing the inflammatory response the tl4 signaling pathway is considered to be one of the main triggers of the obesity induced inflammatory response and saturated fatty acid can cause insulin resistance and low grade inflammation by activating tl4 signaling pathway the intestinal epithelium acts as a barrier and its basic function is to limit the interaction. Increased production of LPS by intestinal microflora will also activate the endocannabinoid system and ultimately lead to adverse glycemic control. The small chain fatty acids composed of acetic acid, propionic acid, and butyric acid deficiency is thought to be associated with type 2 as a protective effect on the guard barrier, result in decrease in the Number of butyrate producing bacteria, which can promote the expression of tight junction protein, reducing mucosal permeability, enhancing the intestinal barrier function, leading to less absorption of the nutrients. Then, dietary fiber promotes the small chain fatty acid production by guard microorganism, while most other potential producers are relatively reduced in type 2 diabetes. Industrial Microflora before and after dietary fiber intervention in volunteers are transplanted into germ free uh, mice, and that indicated the strong and significant association between gut microbiome and improved fiber glucose induced host glycemic control. At the same time, the study proposed that when the small chain fatty acid producing bacteria promoted by dietary fiber have greater abundance and diversity, participant glycated hemoglobin levels so has improved. Butyrate insulin resistance patients receiving fecal microflora from insulin sensitive donors had a significant improvement in insulin sensitivity with improved abundance of butyrate producing. The fecal bacterium prausintigi are the main butyrate producing bacteria. They are better group of bacteria. They prevent the onset and worsening of the uh, hyperglycemia. Bile acids are transformed into secondary bile acids through the enzyme metabolism of gut microbiota. And the industrial microflora of oral bicell acid treated rats was analyzed and showed there is significant change in phylum levels and increased ratio of permicutes. And study reported reduced genetic and diet induced insulin resistance in FXR knockout mice. More bile acid in the abdomen uh, means more chances of absorption of the glucose. A strong association exists between the bile acid and branched amino acid, as well as the potential role of amino acid metabolism in the early stage of diabetes. And they can lead to more, more in diet, lead to increased risk of type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance. In a recent study, patients with type 2 received a short term dietary supplement of branched amino acid, which should reduce insulin secretion. The synthesis pathway BCA has been shown to be related to prevotel or copri. These are the bacteria, and the bacteria is vulgar at least. These are concerned with more synthesis of the BCCA. Gut microbiota and relation in type 2. These are also associated in the pathogenesis of type 1 diabetes. Occurrence of type 1 diabetes in NOD mice depends on the composition of gut microbiota and LPS mediated gut signal involving TLR4 and meat 88 receptor. NOD mice lacking meat 88 protein will not develop type 1 diabetes. The key characteristic of the disease are negatively correlated with the concentration of butyrate and acetate in the blood and the feces. Small chain fatty acids are involved in prevention of mechanism of early onset type 1 diabetes. The preclinical type 1 diabetic patient intestinal microflora is characterized by a dominant bacteriodiabetes with the low stability and diversity of intestinal microflora. The role of gut microflora in activity in type 2 diabetes is still very vague concept. Current studies have few observations to support the explanation that gut microbiota activates type 1 diabetes. Most studies focus on involvement of gut microbiota in the beta cell autoimmunity process. Characteristics of gut microbiota in LADA Remarkably, the gut microbiota patients with LADA showed distinct characteristics, significantly decreased abundance of fecal bacterium species, 
Rosemary species and Brosia species compared with other groups. So more typically, Bacterium rosemary means less chances of Leda. These are short chain fatty acid producing bacteria. The relation to its gestational diabetes, gut microbial dysbiosis during pregnancy may contribute to the pathogenesis of GDM and risk of type 2 diabetes in post GDM women. And this biosis was linked with adiposity, low grade inflammation, insulin resistance, and hyperglycemia. Probiotic supplementation in GDM, especially multi strain probiotics from Bifidobacterium and Lactobacillus, was found to modulate gut bacteria, reduces lipoprotein saccharide, maintains small chain fatty acid concentration, and enhances health outcome. Therefore, a synergistic approach involving both lifestyle modification and probiotic supplementation could be a novel approach to prevent glucose intolerance in women with GDM. Oral microbiota and another factor of gut microbiome and diabetes. The oral cavity serves as an endogenous reservoir for gut microbiota strains and oral fecal transmission is important process. Oral bacteria can translocate to the gut and lead to changes in the microbiota. Oral mechanism may cause disease mainly by synergistic or cooperative way and oral diseases like caries, periodontal disease, and type 2 appear to be mutually correlated. Oral microbiota is an important factor in the development of diabetes, and on the other hand, oral microbiota is also an important avenue for diabetes to cause other oral or systemic complications. Personalized microbiome-driven effects of non-nutritive sweeteners are human glucose tolerance on human glucose tolerance. These non-nutritive sweeteners are all affecting the microbacteria. When used in excess, they altered the glucose metabolism. All four tested sweeteners like saccharin, sucralose, aspartame, and stevia significantly and distinctly altered the human intestinal oral microbiome. But sucralose and saccharin supplementation impairs glycemic response in healthy adults and adversely affects the blood sugar control. In the conclusion, I just like to say, the current research into the gut microbiome in the field of diabetes has gradually moved step by step from initial correlation studies which proved a strong association to exploring the causality and potential mechanism. It is very clear that as science looks to the future, this will be a very promising frontier. It can be foreseen that the gut microbiota will be used not only as biomarker for diabetes, but also as a target for potential therapeutic treatment. Though the intervention of gut micro through the intervention of gut microflora, it will eventually be possible to achieve a more precise and personalized diagnosis as well as treatment of diabetes. This is only going to be possible with a significant investment in extensive multicenter, longitudinal, interventional, and double-blind random clinical trials. Additionally, these will lead an yield an extensive knowledge base upon which data science and exploration can occur. The scientific research community must proceed with a sense of urgency if these data are to be used to their fullest advantage as many new discoveries are waiting just ahead. I just like to conclude by the saying that some informations are peeping at our door whether microbiota may be a marker for the development of diabetes, LIDA and GDM, but their alteration to the satisfactory microbacteria can help in controlling diabetes. Thank you for your present hearing. Thank you.